Hello, this is Dr. Lukes, and this is our final lesson for August 31st. We are looking at this point at section 6.5, which is diffusion in solids. And this is actually a much more complicated topic than what one little tiny section seems to warrant. Um, but basically, solids get categorized in various ways really based on the void space and the solid structure itself. So they can be porous or crystalline or metals or glasses or polymers, ceramics, cellular or wood fibers. All of those are going to have different ways that the substance can diffuse through the solid and therefore need to be characterized and described in different ways. We are looking at cases where I can use Fick's Law. And so basically here I'm saying that the solute is going to, to uh, dissolve into the solid to form an essentially homogeneous solution. So examples where this happens, we can do solid solutions. So zinc moves and migrates through copper. And that's a solid solution that's fairly homogeneous. Uh, nitrogen and hydrogen through rubber tubing will just pass right through there by diffusion. Water goes through food. And leaching when the solid contains a large amount of water. So uh, lots of cases of leaching, but let's think of making coffee in the morning. That's an example of leaching. Uh, if the solid itself contains a lot of water, then this is going to be fixed law diffusion. Now in these cases, I can just simply use a very simple-minded form of fixed law. So for a flat slab, the diffusivity times the concentration difference over the positional difference where those two concentrations were measured. And for a cylinder, we have the partner to this based on the fact that the area is now round and so changes with the radius and so we end up with diffusivity times the concentration difference times 2 pi L over the natural log of the ratio of those two radii. The diffusivity is definitely not dependent on the pressure. It will vary with temperature. Um, but the concentration of the solute is going to be dependent on the partial pressure and so I can talk about the concentration in terms of partial pressures of the solute and something called solubility S. Now solubility is the volume of the liquid or gas that's going to permeate through by diffusion divided by the volume of the solid divided by the pressure, the total pressure. We also are going to have something called permeability that we worry about. I do a lot of uh, Engineers Without Borders projects and part of what we are trying to do is usually find if we can dig a well and if we can dig a well where the groundwater will be clean enough so that say animals grazing on the ground above any waste would be clean by the time it got down to that groundwater. And so permeability is a measure that we use for this. Permeability, diffusivity, and solubility are all interrelated. And the relationship is that the permeability is diffusivity times solubility. And you can use that to find diffusivity, for instance, if you know the permeability of your solid and the solubility. And so this equation can be used to find any missing one of those three. There is a table in your book, again, uh, table 651 has diffusivities and permeabilities of various solids in here. Again, notice that it's for a particular solute. So they have hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, CO2, uh, and water typically through various solids. They have vulcanized rubber or neoprene, polyethylene, 
etc. Okay, and so for those at particular temperatures, they have a diffusivity value, a solubility value, or a permeability, and sometimes multiple of those. The reality is, though, for many, many of the things that we're concerned about, the diffusion is going to be through a porous solid. And so really what's going on is that we have diffusion of, say, a liquid into gas spaces. Okay, And the walls both help and hinder that transport. This is a much larger topic than what we're going to be talking about right now, but what I want you to understand for today is that there's going to be an effective diffusivity. And the effective diffusivity is not just simply how this uh, liquid, say, as shown here, can travel through that airspace, but I'm going to take that diffusivity and multiply and divide it by two terms, okay, the effectiveness and the tortuosity. The effectiveness is going to be about the void fraction. How much space is there for my material to move through this solid? Okay. And then tortuosity is how easy is it for this to go through? Do I have like long straight paths? Or is it constantly having to shift directions? And so effectiveness and tortuosity, that ratio multiplied by the diffusivity just of the liquid into the gas, for instance, gives me an effective diffusivity in the solid. That's all we're going to say about diffusion through solids at this stage. Uh, it's going to pop back in when we talk about, uh, say, solid catalysts and some other topics later in your curriculum. But for now, this will conclude what we're going to talk about in terms of estimating diffusivity coefficients. Thank you very much. We will see you next Wednesday as we begin Chapter 7.